Hello, welcome back to Bumble Stitches podcast. This is episode 37 and it's Tuesday the 26th of March. My name's Nicola and you can find me as Bumble Stitches on Instagram and also on Ravelry and we have a podcast group for the podcast which is called Bumble Stitches podcast group which I'd be delighted if you came over and joined us there. So I'm back not too long after my last episode and it's really nice to be popping in. Um, it's a little bit of a out of sync podcast. I normally podcast on the weekend but I found myself with a little bit of spare time today on a Tuesday so here I am and I have got quite a few things to talk to you all about so I hope you've all been really really well. I've got some notes here so I'm going to be looking down um, because they're things that I don't want to forget to speak to you all about. Um, first thing that's really really exciting that has happened in the last couple of days is the podcast here on YouTube has actually reached a thousand subscribers which has made me so so happy it was teetering on the brink for a very long time sort of up in the high 900s and finally tipped over the edge um, a couple of days ago so I'm really really excited about that I'm just so thrilled that so many of you um, choose to spend some of your precious spare time checking in with me to see what I've been making and it really does make it all worthwhile and all your lovely comments that you leave um, on the YouTube videos and in the Ravelry group and on Instagram are all very very well received and I appreciate every single one of you so thank you all for being part of it with me it's just a really good feeling to have so thank you very much for that okay so because we have a thousand subscribers now to the podcast I thought it would be only appropriate to do a little giveaway so I will um, show you some information not information I'll show you um, a little giveaway that I've got for that which will be held here on YouTube in the comments below and I've got some yarn and a really cute little stitch marker set let me show them to you now so as part of the 1000 subscriber giveaway, I've got these two gorgeous skeins of Nora George yarns. Um, one is her Super Sock in 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon in the Sugar Rose colourway. And some matching beautiful um, Kid Mohair and Silk yarn in the Raspberry colourway. So I think those two held together will be absolutely stunning. So that's part of the prize. And also... In with that is I hope I don't want to take this out of the packaging but I hope you can see it it's this gorgeous stitch marker set with a little sheep and some other little stitch markers there and this has been um, kindly and generously donated to the podcast by my lovely friend Paula of Eva Faith shop um, and she's you can find her on Etsy and also on Instagram and I don't know if the camera's picking up yeah this little this beautiful sheep fabric and Paula's made a lovely little lavender sachet and she grows all the lavender in her garden in Hampshire. So a really beautiful little addition to the giveaway prize. So thank you, Paula, for, for donating that. That's really appreciated. So those are the giveaway prizes. And all you need to do to be in a chance of winning those is to comment on this video below. And I think seeing as reaching a thousand subscribers has really made my week just pop something in the comments telling me um, something that's made your week or your month or just made your day recently just share those good vibes with me and you'll be entered into the giveaway which will be um, drawn by random comment generator there's a little app that you can use to choose those from YouTube and that will be announced on the next podcast and as with all my giveaways and cows the prizes are available to anyone wherever you are in the world I don't mind posting no matter how far away you are just good luck everybody and thanks once again for being a part of this with me. Right, so let's put these safely so I don't lose them. Oh sorry, camera joggle. Okay, the next um, sort of kind of giveaway is the knit along that's going on at the moment and the next knit along, the only knit along running at the moment in the podcast group on Ravelry is the fluff along where we're knitting items with some sort of fluffy content, mohair or alpaca or um, angora, anything like that, anything that's a fluffy yarn, either held on its own or held double with another yarn. And there have been some absolutely stunning projects 
Now this knit along runs until the end of March. So if you're quick, you've still got time to get something in the finished object thread. And lots of you have already, and there are some really beautiful items popping up. Um, some just beyond cute. There was a little pair of knitted baby booties in mohair, which were gorgeous and all sorts of items held double with mohair, shawls and sweaters and all sorts of loveliness. So even if you're not planning on joining in, it's um, quite worth having a little look at some of the beautiful things that have been knitted over in that thread. So the prize that will be, I've got to give away for the fluff along cow is two gorgeous skeins of yarn. Let's get this the right way around. And these have been donated by Kelly of Lay Family Yarn. So thank you, Kelly. That was again super kind and generous i really appreciate everyone that takes the time and and effort and has the generosity to to give a prize it really does help um so this is a skein of dk yarn from kelly and this is the hot chocolate dk 75 25 superwash merino and nylon and this is her natural floof which is very appropriate for the fluff along and it's 74% Surrey Alpaca and 26% Mulberry Silk. So again, these held double would make just the most gorgeous hat or something similar. But I reckon probably a hat, as soon as this is DK. So I think these will be stunning together. So still um, a few more days. Yeah, it's 26th of March today. So a few more days to get your projects into that thread. And obviously those that are already in the thread are in the chance of winning these gorgeous skeins. So... Again, I'll pop these safe. Right, so, should we move on to some knitting? I do have a finished object for you. And I'm really, really pleased that I got this finished in time to wear for going away to the retreat, which I'll chat to you a little bit more about later in the episode. And this is the Shift Cowl, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, which I knitted probably in just over a week so it's quite a quite a quick project um, and I wanted it to go on longer if I'm honest I was really enjoying doing this mosaic knitting um, that's that's part of the pattern so then if the camera's picking that up there you can see how the um, the yarns change throughout the project there are three colors of spin cycle yarns used in this particular project and it was just such a lovely knit. I enjoyed every stitch of it and I was a little bit sad when it was over. Um, the construction is quite clever. You cast on at this edge here and knit all the way down and then there's some shaping so that in the end you have two straight edges that you seam at the back so that it's a cowl that kind of when it's worn looks a bit like a shawl because it comes down to the point here but you don't have any of the worry of the shawl falling off while you're wearing it. So it's super easy to wear, super comfortable, quite lightweight. It's sort of, sort of a sport weight yarn, this spin cycle yarn. And I'm definitely going to knit more of these, hopefully in some hand spun yarn, because as gorgeous as spin cycle yarns are, um, I don't think I'll be able to indulge in too many skeins of that in the future. But it was really nice to have had the opportunity to knit with it for this particular project. So I don't know if I've got the actual pattern handy. I don't think I have, but it is on Ravelry. As I said, it's the Shift Cowl. There's a couple of patterns in the series. There's a um, full size shawl called the Night Shift, which is on my radar as well. Hopefully again out of some hand spun. And there's also a sweater called the Shifty, I think, which is cropped. And I did discount that a little bit when I first saw it. I'm not really sure about the shape, but I've seen it on quite a few finished objects on Ravelry. And actually think that might be quite nice to plan for for the future. But again, probably not in spin cycle yarns because I think that would cost a small fortune to knit. So I did have, the pattern does aim for you to use the full three skeins so you don't have any wastage. And when I finished, I did have a little bit of each colourway left. Not a huge amount, as you can see, but there were still some leftovers. Um, the colours that came in the kit were, and I don't know which is which. I'm going to try and attempt to spin these around and show you. So they were the Castle, Leith, 
and the meadow which are all Edinburgh references and I bought this as a kit from Fig Tree Yarns which are based um, in the Channel Islands but it's available in so many places now spin cycle yarns and I think there was um, quite a lot of interest in it at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival this weekend just gone there's lots of uh, pictures popping up on my Instagram feed of people buying beautiful spin cycle yarns so I certainly won't be wasting these these will be popped into another project because um, they are kind of precious leftovers but very very happy with the way this turned out there are full details I've popped some um, information on my Ravelry project page if you want to have a look there and there's also a picture of me wearing it a bit of a not a very great um, photograph of me wearing this which I got um, taken while I was at the retreat in Cumbria but I just thought it'd be nice to show you what it looked like on if I put it on today I'm just gonna end up in a big old tangle so but yes I highly recommend that pattern if you fancy knitting something um, a little bit different with the mosaic knitting it's a great start to colour work if you haven't tried colour work before because you only ever use one colour yarn per row and you still get this really lovely effect of the colours shifting and changing throughout the project. So that's the shift, uh, yeah, the shift cowl <laughs> by Andrea Mowry. So just the one finished object this week. Um, I did go away for a few days to the uh, Curious Handmade Country House Retreat, which is held up in Cumbria, um, and had such a lovely relaxing time there. And travelled up with my good friend Amanda, who's Knitting Mummy, on Instagram, and we had a really lovely relaxing journey up in the car, and just a beautiful few days relaxing with um, friends that we've met before, and also met um, a new a new lady and just had the best time knitting and went out for a couple of not very strenuous walks um, in the village and just really enjoyed everybody's company um, Emma brought her spinning wheel and I was really jealous that I didn't take mine because I missed it badly and we had a nice class with Elizabeth Doherty of Bluebee Studios she taught us how to do some really good sweater techniques so but most of all, it was all about the relaxing and just chilling out, lots of lovely home cooked food and having a wonderful time. And of course, we had the mini marketplace and I'll show you some goodies that I got from that a little bit later on, too. So that gave me some good knitting time and I thought I needed something um, relaxing to do at the retreat because when I'm in company, even the most simple pattern tends to go a little bit haywire and I have to rip back and whatever so I didn't fancy knitting socks they're not really you know my mojo for socks isn't high at the moment so I decided to have a look through my make nine and see if there's something there I could cast on and I cast on the find your fade shawl by Andrea Mowry which I'll show you in a moment so before I get on to the whips there's just a couple of things that I wanted to chat to you about as well um just checking out my notes because I wanted to mention that there is an event happening in Bath in May on Saturday the 11th that's being organised by Carmen from A Yarn Story which is one of the local yarn shops in Bath and she has organised an event on as I said Saturday the 11th of May in in one of the hotels in Bath and it's called and I need to get this name right it's called Sip Stitch Shop and it is a day event with knitting, tea and cake, a mini marketplace of some carefully selected vendors. And one of the really lovely parts of this event um, that Carmen's organised is that it's kind of to say farewell to Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. Um, Helen is heading back to Australia later this year with her family. And it's kind of, um, yeah, it's just a nice sort of farewell to Helen before she heads back to Australia, although um, I'm sure she will be back in the UK for various yarny things in the future. So if you're interested in that, do pop along to a Yarn Stories website or onto their Instagram page where there's a link and you can get yourself um, involved in that event, which I shall be going to again with my friend Amanda and we're really looking forward to it. So it'd be a nice opportunity to have a little knit and some lovely tea and cake and perhaps make a few cheeky purchases as well so do look out for that in May. 
other events that are coming up um, that I'm interested in, not decided on, but kind of are possibles. Um, definitely Fibre East, which is in Bedford in July. And also, now I don't think there's much chance of me going, but I think I had such bad um, FOMO, uh, fear of missing out of Edinburgh Yarn Festival this last weekend, that I started looking at other options to um, make myself feel a bit better. And one of which is Woolin, which takes a place in Dublin. And I think that's in June. So who knows? It's a possibility, probably not. But I think, I think the event's been going for two years now and it's really picking up in popularity with tutors and vendors. And, you know, I think it's, it's getting to be a really, um, a yarn festival to, to definitely take a visit to so maybe I'll have a little trip over to Dublin um, but we'll see what happens but I'll definitely be going to Fibre East in July so I shall look forward to that and also the event in Bath in May okay should we have a look at some whips now and I'm conscious I am kind of whipping through this all a little bit quickly to be honest with you the reason I'm off today um, on a Tuesday is because it's Justin's birthday so I decided that while he's um, messing about with some things I will just do a little podcast catch you up on what happened recently and some of the things I've been doing and buying um, just because I had the opportunity so I don't want to spend too long though because it's a bit mean if he's sitting on his own on his birthday I'm sure he'll survive though okay so I mentioned Fire Your Fade it's in my lovely yellow field bag and I have had the yarn for Find Your Fade for, well, since 2016 I bought it. And it's been sitting in stash and I keep thinking I must cast that on, must cast it on. And finally got round to doing it. So let me show you where I'm at. And it was perfect knitting at the retreat because most of the sections are just garter. For those of you that have been living under a rock and don't know, this is Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry. Um, this kind of started the whole fading of colours into each other thing a few years ago and it has been knitted I think I would say thousands of times probably but nevertheless it's new to me so I'm really really enjoying doing it now the yarns that I got if you watched my make nine video back at the very beginning of the year slash the end of 2018 you'll I've, I shared all the yarns that I'm using for this then but I will just show you again I'll show you my progress on the project first of all I just don't want it to fall off the needle so I'm just getting it all organized so and if I can get it all in those of you that are familiar with it will know that it's start I can't get it all quite in shot let me just see if I can get up and show you so it starts right down here it seems to be curling under at the moment and then it's fading through and actually the fades are showing better in camera than they are when I look at them while I'm knitting. So it's coming along really, really well, coming along a lot quicker than I thought, actually. As I said, it did provide excellent retreat knitting, this most recent lace section I've done at home. But I did manage to stay on course with the rest of it, although there was a bit of an incident where I counted where how many stitches I should have. While I was at the retreat and realised that I was 30 stitches short, um, but I'd completely missed out about 28 rows. So my point is that I just can't keep count of things while I'm talking to people. So I'm actually just about to start section eight, I think. Got my handy washi tape. I don't know if good old washi tape. I find I always keep this in my notions because it's great just for marking where you are on a pattern. So if you don't do that already and you see some washi tape while you're out and about, it's definitely worth picking some up. Um, yeah, I'm just about to start section nine, which is the next colour melting section. And there are 13 sections in total. So really actually quite pleased with how this is progressing. And I hope I don't run out of steam because I don't want it to then languish for forever more. I think I just need to keep going with this one. So I'll show you the colours and how they've progressed. I'm going to end up with a bit of a avalanche of yarns so the first one which was right here at the bottom was this one here it didn't have a colorway some of these didn't have colorway names on but they were all just amy's amy of the little tailoress it was her find your fade um shawl kit or set of yarns so that was the first colorway 
it then faded into the same but with some added peachy tones which you can see let me see if I can it's a bit of a juggling act isn't it I don't want it to fall off the needles so you can see then we went into the next peachy one it did pull a little bit but I think and I was getting a little bit stressed out you can see it's pulled a bit here as well and when I was knitting it I did get a little bit stressed out um because it wasn't the completely smooth fade sort of you know graduating from one shade to the other that I was expecting it to do but I know that this is an absolutely huge shawl when it's all blocked out and I think certainly while it's in the grand scheme of how much fabric there'll be and how it'll be worn um I don't think it's going to make too much difference I don't think anyone will notice that pooling except me so that was the next colorway then it went into the um the pure sort of peach this is just a solid um, well like a tonal peach with no other colours in it and then the colour that I'm knitting at the moment which is the slightly lighter peach you can see how that's um, faded here which has got the speckles in sort of green and brown speckles which is really really pretty and I'm just about to let me just move these because it is getting a little bit unruly on this table at the moment so the next colourway that will be faded in will be this one and I'm so ridiculously excited to get this one in because this um, aqua sort of very soft turquoisey blue is just so pretty and I've been knitting peachy shades on it for quite a while now so to get these in is making me very very excited so that will be the next one to go in and that will be followed by you can see my method when I wound these up to make sure I got them in the right order. I just numbered them and put little hairband things around so I didn't lose the tags. But it worked for me. Um, so this is the next colourway. I'll take that off so it doesn't look quite so... So you can see the yarn better. So then we're going properly all out into the... Um, from the aqua into a light green, a darker teal and some greys in there as well. Really, really pretty. So that will be colour six. There are seven colours in total. And then finally, and I like the way, um, because some of the sections of the shawl aren't quite as yarn hungry as others. Amy had actually put 50 gram skeins in for a couple of, I think three of the skeins were 50 gram. And this final one is actually got a colourway name. This is called Golden Pippin. And again, it just settles on the green, the soft green at the end with some little brown speckles to finish it up. So those will be the next three going in after I go from this. So you can see how that's going to end up. So I'm really, really enjoying it. I know that if you look at it that, well, it doesn't matter, does it, if you knit what's what's current or what's on trend. Um, you know, you could say, well, everyone was knitting that about three years ago, but it's new to me. I'm loving it. And... I've had the enjoyment of the yarn sitting looking pretty in my stash for quite a while but now is the time and yeah it's it's just a lovely lovely knit so if you fancy something that's easy to knit and will use a lot of your stash and you haven't knitted this before I would recommend it because it is a great pattern and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that next colour looks in um, looks knitted in when I do the next section so hopefully on the next podcast I mean who knows I guess it depends on how long until my next podcast really but it may even be an FO but don't hold me to it so that's what's really been grabbing me knitting wise for the past um, couple of weeks since I saw you last so I'm going to be a good girl instead of throwing all this on the floor I'm going to pop these back in my bag and then you may remember we had a chat on the last podcast about the sweater I was knitting, which is Little Cabin by Caitlin Hunter. And I explained to you all my woes about the sleeves. And lots of you were very, very helpful in the comments, which I thank you for, for taking the time to um, pop your ideas down in comments. And after a bit of procrastinating, well, quite a lot of procrastinating, I now am back on track with Little Cabin. So let me show you what's going on. Now, I did have a little bit of a sleeve last time that I showed you. 
I don't have any sleeve to show you because I frogged that. But what I did do is I retried on the body. So I'll show you where I am with the body. Let me show you the pattern first. Let's do this in some sort of logical order in case you didn't see it before. So this is Little Cabin. It's patterned by Caitlin Hunter of Boyle and Knitworks. And you can see it's a heavily bobbled pattern on the sleeves and the body and the stitch detail at the bottom resembles little cabins hence the name and the construction of this is one that I haven't done before so you knit the whole of the body from the bottom up you knit the sleeves from the bottom up and then you join them all onto a yoke which I think is probably quite a traditional um, yoke construction but it isn't one that I've done before so the yarn called for in the pattern is worsted. Um, I've actually used for this an Aran weight, which is pretty similar. Um, and this is Debbie Bliss Donegal Luxury Tweed Aran. And it doesn't have a colourway name. It's just got a colour on. But I think this is um, not out of print. What's the word for yarn? I think this is discontinued now. I did pick it up on sale. Um, so it was really really good value and it's such lovely yarn so here we are with the body let's not pull it off the needles because that would be ridiculous so here's the body the color doesn't look quite the lights catching it a little bit differently it's a bit more it's coming up very um greeny on the camera but it's actually like a rich sort of toffee almost like a, an ochre color so you can see here all the cabins at the bottom and then quite a few bobbles and the bobble rounds do take a while but I think they are beautiful I love the texture I think it's a really really nice design so I've knitted the body I tried it on again and I decided that it needs to be about three inches longer so I'm only about a couple of rows away from the body being complete and then I shall move on to the sleeves and just a very quick recap the problem I had was that I've knitted this sweater a size smaller than I would normally knit for me because I have been knitting things way too big, um, notably my Tecumseh, and been disappointed. So I thought I won't do that again. I shall knit something a size smaller than I, my, I would instinctively choose to knit. So that's what I've done. I've tried it on. The body fits. I'm happy with the fit of the body. Um, the extra length is good. I'm glad I've, I tried it on again, popped it onto waist yarn. And did that and because I've knitted the body a size smaller than I normally would obviously the sleeves the corresponding sleeves for the pattern would be a size smaller than I normally would knit now I don't have very small arms my arms are you know they're bigger than I would like them to be that's for sure but the sleeve that I was going to be knitting would have just been too tight um, especially in the sort of the upper arm area so that was the conundrum and lots of people suggested um, maybe knitting the sleeves a bit shorter because I was worried about having enough yarn to knit the sleeves the next size up it just my mind was just racing with all the things that could go wrong with the sleeves on this jumper what I've decided to do is I have checked the yarn that I've got left I think I have got I'm pretty certain I've got plenty of yarn to complete it and I'm knitting the sleeves for the next size up I'm going to knit them full length um, and it would be I, I'd find I would struggle to make the sleeves shorter because you knit them from the bottom up I'm sure lots of you would be able to figure that out but I need direction so I'm going to knit them the next size up and when I join everything up here at this section show notes as well there when I get to this point where I join everything together I'm just going to do an extra knit round where I adjust my stitch count accordingly for going up into the yoke so it sounds to me like it's going to work out okay had a bit of a conflab at the retreat with some other much more experienced and capable knitters than me and it was yeah it was pretty much decided that that wouldn't shouldn't be too much of a problem to do so that's what I'm going to go for so I've got some renewed um, enthusiasm to get this done and to carry on with it and as I said before, if all else fails, then it will certainly be a very oversized sweater for my daughter. Or failing that, I'm sure there'll be somebody that would quite like to receive it if it really isn't the thing for me. So that's Little Cabin. And 
that's pretty much all I've worked on um, in the last couple of weeks, like what I would call active whips. So, but it's nice to be clear in my head what I'm going to be doing with it because I hate it when you're in knitting limbo and you're just really not sure and it takes the, um, kind of takes the shine off your project because you feel a little bit lost and then you, you know, you just really don't feel like knitting it. That's my experience anyway. So, and that's living in my lovely La Bien Ame bag from Amy. Righty ho, so we've had a chat about the active whips. Um, resting whips, there's quite a few of those. At the moment, I've still got the Volt sweater, which is living in this other fringe bag. Um, I'm only gonna show you the front for those of you that haven't seen it before. It's a pattern by Sue Stratford, who is knitting and gin on Instagram. And it's an intarsia design with the striking vault pattern on the front and this gorgeous detail here at the hem where the rib goes up into this sort of slant section here so that when you join it with the the front and back it because it is a sewn together garment um, you get like a raised section where the front and back meet so that hasn't had any love at all since I saw you all last and I think the main reason for that is well it's because of find your fade because I just can't seem to put that one down and also I think now the weather's starting to warm up a bit I'm thinking DK jumper I'm not going to need it urgently so but it's the back's nearly done and then it's just a case of seaming up the sides and, and doing the sleeve so I need to make sure that doesn't become um, a distant memory in the resting whips Sorry, another little camera joggle there. Um, yeah, and that leaves, what else have we got? We've got Dust of Snow, which is the wrap held um, with fingering weight yarns and mohair. That hasn't been knitted on. I've got my Deshane, which needs to be sewn up, um, and some socks, and of course, things like blankets and stuff like that. So there are still quite a few whips that are resting at the moment, but... I'm comfortable with it so it's, it's really not a problem so I have got quite a few new things to share with you and I'm going to kind of split them up into different categories let's just move my pattern because some of them are things that I've purchased some are gifts some were swaps so I'll kind of explain to you um, yeah how I came about them so thing I'm going to start with first is when we were um, before the retreat Julie from Suffolk Socks kindly organized a swap sort of like a secret Santa but without the Christmas for um, the retreat attendees so we were each given a name of a person we were going to swap with and we could then if we didn't know them we could have a look at their perhaps their Instagram profile or the Ravelry page and see what sort of colors they liked and what kind of things that we thought they would like in their swap. And I received the most beautiful felt and leather bag. And this, my swap partner was Stuart, um, who came over from the States for Edinburgh Yarn Festival and the, um, the Country House Retreat. And I've met Stuart before. She is such a lovely lady. And she has got a shop. Now I can't remember the name of it and I feel terrible. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head but she makes beautiful leather goods and she has made this bag and I don't know if you can see she's embossed my name on the tag so this is a truly treasured item and it's got the lovely leather handle and it's wool felt and it's really quite roomy actually I haven't put project in it yet because I wanted to keep it to one side for showing you all on the podcast today but I just think to sit by the side of where you're knitting and knit out of it is just going to be such a treat and it's just so unique and I absolutely adore it. I think it's just the most perfect gift that she could have made for me. And as if it wasn't enough to give me this beautiful bag, inside there were some goodies too and I'll show you those. So first of all is this skein of sock yarn by 
campfire knits and this is a four ply fingering weight superwash 7525 superwash merino nylon and it is the Squam 2018 colorway and I know that Stuart and a couple of other friends do go to the um, the Squam retreat or event which I don't know too much about but having heard them talk about it it sounds absolutely fantastic and I'm guessing this was um, a colourway that was dyed especially for that so this is very very special I'm looking forward to finding something to knit this into there's a new shawl actually that Stephen West has just released which I think is something to do with the sea I think wait something waves I can't remember but it's on Ravelry I think it's on the first page and it's this this colourway would be absolutely perfect for that with just need to find something else to to pop with it so that was in my swap and also there was this cute little retro tin which is magnetic which is fab because inside are some folding scissors darning needles and pins which as you can see all stay put and don't rattle around so that was really cool and also ah look here we go this is i think this is stuart's company name leather wool linen which is embossed on the bottom here and this is a little leather needle case or needle book i think you call them and it's got a lovely little piece of tweed in with the darning needle already in and i just totally adore things like this that are handmade and tactile and just got so much love and care and attention in them so couldn't have been happier with that little swap parcel from Stuart I'll pop that down um, the next thing that I got was actually the goodie bag for the retreat so I'll just get this out this is my this is my basket that I bought at Fiber East last year that I lined with some Liberty fabric that was another story if you see that on the podcast episode um, and I just need to find the yarn that goes with this so bear with me for one second while I rummage in this basket of loveliness so the retreat is sponsored by the um, the fiber company and Helen designed a pattern especially for the retreat which I don't think has been released yet so I won't share it on this episode but we were each given two skeins of this beautiful um, fingering weight Cumbria yarn from the Fibre Company. It's a blend of brown, um, mass and wool, merino and mohair. Beautifully squishy and I've got mine in this gorgeous colourway called Cowberry. And you can see the colour of it, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's a burgundy almost going into a dark fuchsia stunning so with the pattern that Helen has designed to go with this it's going to be a really fabulous shawl and that was given to us along with this gorgeous Liberty fabric bag by Jilly Makes I'll just show you Jilly's so you can see that Jilly Makes and she's on Instagram and also on Etsy and it's lined with a beautiful sort of more graphic print which I think I really like the way that goes with the Liberty print and this is called a Japanese knot bag so one handle longer than the other and you just pop one through the other I've seen these on Instagram and on Etsy but I've never actually had one I think it's it's really really ingenious the way it works and the, because it isn't lined or anything it isn't sort of too structured you can quite easily just pop it in another bag. I think there's a card here with, yeah, that's Jilly Makes details of her Etsy shop. So it's etsy.com um, Jilly Makes, all one word. And you can easily pop those two skeins in there. And it's absolutely gorgeous. So that was a little goodie bag. If that wasn't enough, um, I was also really lucky that my lovely friend Amanda, Knitting Mummy, um, she and I share a March birthday. Mine's on the 2nd, hers on the 14th. So we exchanged birthday presents at the retreat, which was lovely as well. And 
I meant to bring my, um, Amanda got me a lovely bone china mug with bees on it and I meant to make myself a cup of tea and bring it up and show you all but I did forget to do that. Um, but she got me some lovely goodies but I'll show you the yarn and fibre sort of section of the goodies that she got me and she knows I've gone spinning mad lately so she bought me this beautiful um, braid of fibre which is just amazing the colours I think are gorgeous and that's from Siobhan's Crafts and it's a one of a kind rainbow and it's 100% merino hand dyed and there's 100 grams there so I should hopefully be able to get some really nice hand spun out of that absolutely beautiful and she also got me because she knows I've been kind of I used to always just buy quite um, fairly sort of subdued tones in my yarn and fibre. But just of late, um, and partially because of a podcast that I've been watching, which is Pineapple Yarns, which I'll speak about in a minute. Um, yeah, I'm really into the brighter colours and the sort of virgin on the neons and whatever. So she also got me this gorgeous skein of Spectrum Fibre Yarn. And this is their Twisted Sock. And the colourway is Flash. And it's 80% merino, 20% nylon. So it's quite a plump yarn. Um, it's quite a high twist. But the colours that are in it, obviously the lovely bright neon pinks. But as well, it goes all the way to these very dark, sort of like petrol blues and corals. It's just beautiful. So it's very, very spoilt by Amanda. So thanks, hun. <laughs> She knows how much I love all this stuff that she got me. So that was gorgeous. So that was my birthday goodies. Um, so what happened next? We had a mini marketplace and I sometimes make some bags, some project bags myself and take along, but I ran out of time this time, but uh, other people had been industrious and brought some of their goodies um, to the marketplace. So I'll share with you what I bought there. And I've got a couple of other goodies to show you. Okay, so Meta, um, who co-runs the retreat, co-organises with Helen, has her own yarn company called Gather. And Gather is on Instagram and also on Etsy. And Meta dyes all her yarns naturally. So this is a kid silk lace... 72% uh, mohair, 28% silk, dyed with Alcamilla Mollis, which I think is from either Meta's Garden or, or her allotment. And the same is on here, it's the same Alcamilla Mollis, but this is a 70% alpaca, 20% silk, 10% cashmere. So, so soft and drapey. And the two knit together, I think will be really, really pretty. So I'm not sure what they're gonna become yet. I did think about doing something for Mum for Mother's Day, but I haven't got my um, act together in time, but beautiful. Something else I picked up at the marketplace, um, Julie, who organised our swap from Suffolk Socks, had made these gorgeous bags for the retreat. And so impressed with Julie's um, machine embroidery skills, all sort of freeform embroidery, and this is replicating the um, Melby house that we stay in which I think is absolutely stunning gorgeous tweed fabric and some liberty here and a little drawstring so perfect for some socks so I picked that up and that came with some really cool little um, stitch markers as well and finally in the marketplace Helen had some baskets for sale now I really didn't need another basket, or did I? Because now that I'm spinning a lot, I thought a basket is really nice to keep your fibre in. So I bought this basket and you can see it's a really nice, um, just to put it into more perspective, it's a nice size, it's not too big. And what I liked about it for spinning is it's very, very smooth. There's no sort of raw edges on the, on the weaving of this basket. It's got lovely leather handles and it's by Big Blue Mama. And they're on Instagram and I believe they probably have a 
shop as well website and they're based in Calgary in Alberta Canada and these are all ethically made um, by women in where are we in Ghana um, yeah so it provides employment and income for the women and we get to enjoy their beautiful beautiful work and help to support those women in supporting their families and communities as well so that's absolutely stunning so that was all the um, marketplace goodies that I bought I just need to scooch in again um, we also were treated to I showed you the Eva Faith set that I have in the giveaway um, Paula gave each of us one of these as well so that's exactly the same as the one in the giveaway that she generously gave to us for, for a prize so I've got that as well and we have a swap table oh also from Paula this basket just give, keeps on giving I've got these really lovely stitch mark, uh, progress keepers which are kind of mermaidy themed I think so there's a little one with the stones and the pearls and this gorgeous oyster shell with the pearl in it which I think is so so pretty so do check out Eva Faith on Etsy if you fancy some lovely new progress keepers and stitch markers because Paula's got some lovely things in her shop what was I saying oh there's a swap table so um, one of the ladies that comes and helps us out um, well she's fabulous a lady called Nikki she comes to the house every time we're there and she makes teas and coffees and brings homemade cakes and all sorts of wonderful things and generally looks after us and spoils us rotten um, she's involved with the hospice at home um, charity and organization in the, her local area and her and a group of ladies in the village do things to raise funds for the hospice at home care and what we do is we all take some things that we're no longer in love with or we don't need or for whatever reason you just pop them on the swap table you can help yourself to something else and whatever's left you know which is normally lots quite a lot of stuff knitting yarn and and various other bits and pieces um nikki takes and her team of ladies knit lots of items which are then in turn sold to make more money for the charity so that's always good fun i did take along some yarns but i was really happy to see that there was some fiber on the table and this is a braid from Manos del Uruguay and it's hand dyed extra fine merino tops doesn't have a colourway um, but it's 100% extra fine merino 100 grams so I think this will be really nice to go with some of the other um, fibre that I've spun possibly to go towards one of the um, patterns that I'm hoping to knit from hand spun so either the night shift or the shifty or something like that but really nice to see some fiber there that i could get from the swap table so i think that covers everything that i got from the retreat um there was one little package that arrived before i went away and i was mentioning to you that i've been quite taken with some of the brighter shades um sort of the, the neons and the, and the brighter shades of yarn and fibre recently and a lot of that is down to me binge watching um, Marina who's Pineapple Yarns and she's on Instagram as Pineapple Yarn and she's on um, Etsy as well and obviously she has a podcast on YouTube and she was I think she lives in Minnesota now but she was originally in living in Hawaii and this has given her her love of all the sort of tropical things and the little pineapple that she has as part of her logo and her name and I couldn't resist this set which is um, mermaids and narwhals so there's this gorgeous project bag which you can see it's got the mermaids and the narwhals on the fabric and a gorgeous little tag pineapple yarns and how cute is this this little um this little enamel pineapple on the zip pull which you can take off and use as a progress keeper as well so the kit came with the bag a skein of her lani sock yarn which is 75 25 the usual mix um, this is called mermaids and narwhals it's also got a lovely little gold starfish 
charm and the yarn is beautifully speckled she did have some gorgeous bright skeins um, but they were sold out in her shop but I was happy to get this because it's stunning and I don't know how I've resisted this there's a really cute little pineapple jelly sweet so now I've showed you that can uh, I'll be sampling that later so that is everything so there's quite a lot there but I don't feel I have to justify it because it was swaps and it was gifts and it was just everything so hopefully you enjoy seeing it because I really enjoy sharing it all with you and hopefully you'll recognize it as it becomes projects later on in future episodes right so let's have a little tidy up because the last section of the podcast that I want to move on to is spinning um, it's quite a short section um, at the moment, although I have been quite busy. I did ask you last episode if you wanted me to do separate videos for spinning, if you weren't interested and you just wanted to hear about knitting, or if you wanted me to do it at the end, uh, you know, if you didn't mind it being in the main podcast. And the people that did comment about the spinning section said, yep, they were quite interested to see it. And yes, it was good to keep it at the end of the episode so that if you weren't interested, you could just switch off and you wouldn't miss anything afterwards. So here at the end of the episode is our little spinning section. And I have been in love with my spinning again. Really, really love it. Um, I've got a couple of skeins of yarn to show you that I have completed. And I was very good. Well, with the aid of Justin, just before I went away, I took the wheel... Um, took it downstairs and we popped it on some old um, cover the table with some old newspapers and stuff and completely cleaned it all because my wheel unfortunately isn't um, lacquered or finished so it does get a bit dusty and a bit grubby I've got some um, wood cleaner so I gave it a good clean and he oiled it all for me and I put a new brake band on it and yeah so it was it had like a little MOT if you like um, let me just share this with you though. I have shared these pictures on Instagram, but for those of you that aren't on Instagram or don't see, this was a spin that I did a couple of weeks ago. And I don't think I shared this on the last podcast. I'm pretty sure I didn't. But this is um, from Dragon Hill Studio. And it's a, I think it's a Polworth blend. I'm having that deja vu again when I can't remember if I've showed you stuff or not. So. If I have, then you can enjoy it all over again. Um, this was a two ply, just wound, um, spun rather two bobbins of singles and then plied them together. I'll um, wind the skein so you can see it. And I was actually quite pleased with this spin. It was definitely um, progress on some previous spins that I'd done. So that is one skein that I've done and one that I have just finished is this beauty that I'm so chuffed with the way this turned out really really pleased this is 100% merino and merino had been my spinning nemesis for a while it I find it um I don't think it's just me I think it is recognized to be more difficult to spin than some of the other more grippy fibers with longer staple lengths because merino is obviously softer and it's got a shorter stable length, staple length so it's a little bit more challenging to spin so I was really pleased to have got the result that I've got with this skein here and this was a selection of baby braids that I got from the Shepherd's Hut on Etsy and they was kind of like a gradient so they went from there's a picture on my Instagram if you follow me on Instagram you'll see it on there and they were tiny little um, baby braids of fibre, yellow, blue, peach through orange, pink. Um, yeah, all the, you know, through the through to the, um, the purple as well. And I decided to spin them sort of in the opposite. I decided two bobbins. This is a two ply yarn that I've made here. And I started one bobbin with the yellow and went through the orange and all the way through. And I started the other bobbin at the blue through the purple and then finished with the yellow so that when I plied them together, they would ply as opposites because I really like the barber pole effect. So you can see that the blue has plied with the yellow and then the yellow has gone into the purple and so on and so forth. What I didn't quite work out was that if I did that, the pinks kind of were in the middle of both bobbins. So there's quite a big pink section. Um, 
so you can see the middle of the skein is almost all pink it doesn't seem to be showing up so much here but overall I'm really really pleased with how it's spun up on how I spun it and plied it um, yeah it was a, a, a good result because the little baby braids were so so pretty as they were I've had them virtually since I bought my wheel uh, since I was given my wheel and but I didn't dare spin them because I didn't want to ruin them it's like having that you know super lovely skein of yarn that you want to really do justice to there's quite a big pink section there as you can see but overall I'm really really pleased with how it's come out it's been washed and, and dried and it's, it's sort of ready to go and I did learn an awful lot um, I mentioned last episode that I have taken a subscription to blueprint which was craftsy and I've been watching a series of tutorials by Felicia Lowe of um, Sweet Georgia Fibres Sweet Georgia Yarns or Sweet Georgia Fibres she does a really good um, series of classes on preparing coloured fibre to spin and the different results that you can get by preparing your fibre in different ways so I would highly recommend that it's not an ad I'm not you know I pay for my my blueprint I'm not um but I just found it really really useful and if you're starting out in spinning and you want some extra help and advice I think it's yeah it's definitely worth checking out so that was my latest spin and at the moment living in my little basket I've got some gorgeous fiber that I bought from John Arban when I was at Unravel a few weeks ago so I think it was called Rosewood. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think there's Merino in this. I can't remember the blend um, and it was sold out of the great big huge um, sort of tubs that they had their, their fibre. Um, I think these are comb tops. I think it was a blend. There's a lot of Merino in there. But it's such a lovely colour. And I'm really enjoying getting that on the wheel at the moment. So I think, I didn't think this was going to be a very long podcast, but I was wrong. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed everything that I've shared with you today. So just to very quickly recap, um, get your finished objects in for the Fluff Along Cow, which ends at the end of this month. Um, please comment down below and tell me what's made your day, your week, whatever, um, to be in with a chance of winning the 1,000 subscriber giveaway goodies. And if you have enjoyed the podcast, um, please consider subscribing if you haven't already or give me a thumbs up because it's just nice to see it reaching out and our little community, our little Bumble Stitches community growing with each episode. It's really making me so, so happy to share it all with you. So I will see you all next episode. And in the meantime, take care and happy knitting. Bye.